Good evening. Happy Easter to those of you who celebrate. Unfortunately, it's not such a happy Easter for Nick Webster. He's dead. He fell from a cliff behind his roadside tavern. It's very sad. His death was ruled an accident, but there are those who say, there are those who believe. Or no accident. And I'm, I'm inclined. Uh, now, okay, I'm gonna be honest with you right now, okay? I have no idea. I'm assuming it was murder because otherwise, you know, they wouldn't make a game out of it. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm guessing he did not just fall off a cliff, drive his car off a cliff. I'm guessing something much more nefarious happened, but I don't know. We're going to find out here as we play Death at the Dive Bar. Why was it not called Death at a Dive Bar? I don't know. I mean... I would think death at a dive bar rolls off the tongue better than death at the dive bar, but whatever. De death at the dive bar dot com. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a website that looks kind of like death hat. Death, death at, death at, D E A that the dive bar. So apparently this can be played with one person. I don't know, you have to see. You notice that it is still wrapped in its uh, cellophane shrunken shrink wrap. Um, so I know nothing about this except what I've read on the back, which is a murder at a local dive bar. Uh oh, actually, how did I sort of missed this sentence, a mysterious masked figure, small town full of suspects, when owner Nick Webster falls from a cliff behind his roadside tavern, his death is ruled an accident, because of course it is, but one of your employee, one of his employees, not mine, not my employees, one of his employees suspects foul play, and she needs your help to prove it. I fluke and potato man and Ansei and Lynn Waterhouse. Well, don't give anything away, because I think these are all the same. I don't think this is like um, I don't think this is one of those dynamic games that change as you do it. Difficulty is easy, so you know, shouldn't be too difficult. Let's let's do. I got I got a camera here. Got I got an overhead camera for when we really got to take a look at you know the evidence. Get a, get a close look at the evidence. We'll use that one for now. We'll stick with this pretty wide shot, and let's get to the game. What do I see on the back? Looks like there's some sort of typical bar paraphernalia. Eager. Oh. Let's open 
open this up and take a look. It's from the world's number one murder mystery company. Gnomish Hat Incorporated. 2020. Okay. Hi, Beggin' Bill. How are you doing? And that's it. The, the lid is off. The lid is off. Put this here. Just to remind us, this is... It's good to remind us of our goal. Our goal here is... Well, I guess our goal is not for there to be a death at the dive bar, but... Our goal is to, to figure out what happened with this said dive bar. So what do we got here? I'm going to keep this for, for stress relief. Okay. Got a game manual. Uh-oh. Solution. I give it to you right up front there. Spoilers inside. Do not open until you're sure you know who the killer is. To confirm your theory without spoiling the solution and receive an exclusive epilogue after you've solved the case, consult the online hints at deathofthedivebar.com. Is this just an elaborate way to funnel you to their website? I don't know. All right, on the top here, we have a very official looking letterhead. Gray Investigations. Let's, oh, stuff on the back too. Oops. Oh, let's read. Okay, it's clearly a, there's three ciphers on the back there. Gray Investigations. Hello, investigator. I'm so glad you've joined Gray Investigations. I'm excited to be mentoring a new member of our investigative team. And I trust you're up to the challenge of solving this crime. Your client, Carmen, was struggling to get anyone to listen to her before she came to us. I don't know what the local authorities were thinking when they ruled Nick Webster's death an accident. Those local authorities. As soon as I took a look, I knew she was on to something. There's no doubt in my mind, Nick Webster was murdered. It's just a matter of figuring out who killed him. Carmen's already managed to identify four clear suspects, each of them more than capable of committing the crime. As you're working this case, pay attention to your suspect's means, motive, and opportunity. Only a combination of all three will reveal the killer. When it comes to alibis, you should be able to corroborate everyone's whereabouts at the time of the murder. Anyone who can prove they weren't at the scene of the crime is probably in the clear. But it's not enough to simply exclude innocent suspects. To truly crack this case, you'll need to work out who the real criminal is and why they committed the crime. Who would want to kill Nick Webster? Who would want to do that? Crazy. It's crazy. I'm enclosing all of the evidence Carmen sent. As you re review her notes, remember... A good investigator never takes a suspect at their word. You should always be able to find information that confirms or contradicts someone's claims. Oh yeah? What about your claims, Michelle Gray? What about Carmen's claims? I'm already suspicious. Get out of the gate. Oh, and I should warn you. A little familiar... <laughs> A little familiarity with code breaking often comes in handy in cases like this. 
yeah, you know, usually there's like a, there's usually a secret code involved in most uh, local murders at a bar. Usually comes down to code breaking skills. Unsurprisingly, people with something to hide often use whatever methods they can to conceal their true intentions, like a simple replacement cipher. I've had to familiarize myself with lots of different vari varieties of cryptic communication over the years. I've left you with an example of one of the most common types of codes I've encountered to help get you up to speed. But don't forget, once you understand the principle, there are lots of ways to apply the theory. All right. I think I've given you all the advice I can. You should have what you need to find the killer. If you're able to interpret the evidence. Good luck. Michelle Gray, Private Investigator, Gray Investigations, LLC, 562 Maple Court, Chicago, Illinois, 60652. Very official looking. And on the back, there's some shifting codes, an A to B, I'm sorry, B to A, a D to A, and a 1 to A, or an L, I to A, 8, I to A. Is it important that I decode these? I mean, I probably, it's probably not very important. These are just like examples of codes. Let's lay that aside for now. What else do we got? Old Scratch Tavern. Well, we know Old Scratch is a, another name for the devil. Dear Miss Gray. Okay, so this is the letter from Carmen. Dear Miss Gray. It's funny, the letterhead for this Old Scratch. Now look at this. Like, this is like a local bar letterhead. Six County Road 66. Perdition, Indiana. They're, they're really kind of doing a little bit too much on the nose. But fine, let's continue. Dear Miss Gray, I'm writing because I think my boss was murdered, but I can't prove it on my own. I'm hoping somebody at Gray Investigations can help me. Let me give you a little background. I learned everything I know about bartending from my boss, Nick Webster. He taught me how to pull a perfect pint and coached me on 86ing rowdy patrons. He even helped me rearrange my work schedule so I could be home more when my sister was sick last year. Oh, already. Already. Pulling out the highlighter. Carmen had a sick sister. She could be home more when her sister was sick last year. Good, good point. Nick was the best. Old Scratch Tavern, well, it isn't much to look at. It's one of those places that feels like home. That was all Nick. I guess that's why it hit me so hard when Nick died in December. It was so sudden and so bizarre. The official story is Nick was drunk, lost his footing, but... Too many strange things happened in the months leading up to his death for me to believe it was an accident. I don't know, Carmen. It's hard for me to take you seriously with that accent. The thing is, Nick had been seeing the devil. For months, he'd been telling anyone who listened that there was someone or something lurking out in the woods behind the bar. First, everyone assumed he was just exaggerating for the sake of a good story. Nick could spend a whole night in a corner booth spinning yarns and telling tales. This is like every trope thrown into... Uh, um, this is not great writing, gotta tell you. But whatever. There's no way he could be making up the creepy notes he was getting, or the dead animals on the doorstep, or the fires that kept flaring up near the building. He had no reason to, not when things were getting so dangerous. 
Someone was trying to scare him, maybe even scare him to death. He was obsessed with figuring out who was to blame. He'd stay in the bar's office for hours, poring over the security camera footage and scribbling notes. On the night he died, I'd just closed up when he came out of the office and said he'd finally figured it out. Before he could explain, I killed him. Oh. All right, well. I guess we solved it. Carmen, thank you for being forthright and admitting that you killed him. <clears throat> es un chiste. On the night he died, I just closed up when he came out of the office and said he'd finally figured it out. Before he could explain, he saw someone outside and ran off into the woods. My back was to the door, so I didn't see anyone. By the time I turned around, it takes me a while to turn around. Sometimes it could take me a good 20, 30 seconds to turn around. By the time I turned around, both Nick and the devil were gone. And all that was left was a small fire burning outside. After I put it out, I, I waited for Nick, but he never came back. I can't help wondering what he would have told me if he had the chance. After his death was ruled an accident, I went through and found all the notes he'd been keeping about the devil in a locked deposit bag I still haven't figured out how to open. I even found proof that the devil was real. Finally, caught on camera like Nick had tried to, be, to do for months. I took the evidence I found to the sheriff, hoping it would change his mind. But he didn't care that Nick was really chasing after someone that night. The official determination is still that Nick slipped and fell off the cliff. But see, the thing is, I went out to the place where he died. And I don't think the authorities even bothered to look any further than the spot where they found Nick's body. There was caution tape down the rocks, but nothing up on the top of the cliff. The ground near the ledge didn't look like it had been disturbed since Saturday night, and if the authorities had been there, there's no way they'd count out foul play. Somebody in a devil mask really was there that night, and whoever it was pushed Nick off that cliff. Okay. The sheriff may not believe me, but I must be making someone nervous by looking to Nick's death. I've started to get threatening letters, just like the ones Nick was getting before he died. I'd be lying if I said I'm not scared, but those threats also prove I'm on to something, don't you think? I know I'm close, but I've still got questions I can't answer. I'm sending you all the evidence I've collected in the hopes that you'll be able to do what I can and bring my friend's killer to justice before it's too late. Sincerely, Carmen Rojas. Hmm. Really leaning into the, the symbolism. Rojas, red. He saw the devil. It's an old scratch tavern. But nothing, so far, nothing subtle about this. All right, so we got the letter. First of all, I'm going to take the solution. I'm going to put the solution over here. Next to the, next to the, can we see it in this shot? It's right here. This is where the solution is going to sit. All right, Carmen Rojas. We got Carmen's letter. There's nothing on the back of Carmen's letter. She wasn't writing no, no ciphers, I don't think. But I think it's important we do remember. He even helped me rearrange my work schedule so I could be home more when my sister was sick last year. Let's not forget that. I highlighted, highlight, highlighted it. Ooh, ooh, now we're getting to, we got, looks like a newspaper clipping. Got a picture. Look at this. Old Scratch's, Old Scratch owner's death ruled an accident. Oh, and all the, on the back, new development plans for Devil's Well, 
boy, they, they sure lean into the, the satanic imagery on this. Hey, Matt, Maddie and Katie, Paris Jacksonal, Paris Jacksonal. Hope y'all are doing well. I, I mean, they want you to read the front one, but I have a sneaking suspicion that the article on the back is of use. But let, let's read this. Well, you can see. No, let's go back to this camera. I'm going to read, you know, the one. Seriously, okay. The, the, okay, the paper's called The Perdition Pioneer. So we all know what perdition is. Okay. Pioneer. I don't like it. I don't like they're trotting on my turf a little bit. So it's dated Tuesday, December 10th. I've got I've got my own notes going here. Let's let's be sure that we've got this. Okay, so victim Nick Webster. Date of death. So if it came out. Tuesday, December 10th, and then it says that they announced Monday that it was ruled at okay, but I still don't know what date. It was it was ruled an accident on Monday. Date of death is still a question mark, but ruled accident on Monday, December 9th. Still don't know the date of the death, but I'm sure I'm sure we're going to get it. Okay, a dollar fifty, dollar fifty. Hi, Pivy. Old Scratch's owner. All right, let me get another. Old Scratch's owner death ruled an accident. Oh wait, no, it's by Mitzi, by someone named Mitzi. So maybe deep southern accent. I'm just going to read it in my own fucking voice. A tragic end to a difficult year. Oh, we can see Nick Webster and Carmen Rojas toast to the 10th anniversary of Old Scratch Tavern on November 1st, 2015. So it's been open since 2005. November 1st. So his death, he was ruled, okay, it was December 9th that he was ruled an accidental death. I wonder how long, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be curious if his date of death doesn't come near to December, I'm sorry, to November 1st. Old Scratch Owner's Death Ruled an Accident, A Tragic End to a Difficult Year by Mitzi Sutherland. The Perdition Sheriff's Office announced Monday that it's ruled the death of Old Scratch Tavern owner Nicholas Webster. Oh, wait. So his name's Nicholas, not Nick. Okay. Now it's worth pointing out here, right? Nick is also slaying for the devil. Just saying. Mitzi, I don't think so. Carmen Rojas, obviously, in the red. According to Sheriff Paul McGinty, Webster fell to his death in the early hours of Saturday morning. Okay, so it's the Saturday before Tuesday, December 10th. So the 7th. So 12, 7, I don't know, a year. 2015. That's probably 2015. Put a little question mark under the the year, because it's not, it would make sense that it was 2015. So his date of death was just a week after the 10th anniversary of the old Scratch Tavern. Hmm. Early hours of Saturday morning, likely minutes after leaving the old Scratch Tavern, is dark, and unfortunately Nick just lost his footing. McGinty said at a press conference Monday morning. A neighbor discovered Webster's remains at the bottom of Devil's Well. Oh, speak of the devil. A local waterfall early Saturday morning. Huh. 
neighbor. This is not the first misfortune to befall Webster and his tavern in recent months. In July, Webster told this paper, nothing valuable. Oh. Well, she said nothing valuable. In... Oh, <laughs> i got to continue. In July, Webster told this paper nothing valuable was stolen following a series of petty burglaries, but he said he was taking measures to ensure the incidents did not continue. Sheriff McGinty confirmed that no perpetrator was apprehended for the thefts. All right, that's, that's in line with what Carmen was saying was going on. More recently, Webster had reported a series of small fires and other disturbances at the bar, again, corroborating what, what Carmen told us. Official records show that Webster called Perdition Emergency Services 10 times between September 1st and December 7th. So yeah, he died December 7th. 10 times. At that point, you'd be, you'd be like labeled as a troublemaker, right? Carmen Rojas, a bartender at Old Scratch Tavern, said Webster feared someone was out to get him, though she did not know who might have wanted to harm her employer. The circumstances of Webster's death led some perdition residents, including Rojas, to speculate whether his fall might not have been accidental. Okay, the phrasing there is wrong, right? When you say something might not have been something you're actually implying that it might have been. Here they actually want to imply that it wasn't accidental. So they're using a phrase that is supposed to imply the opposite of what it says, and they're employing it literally. Okay. I'm, I'm going to have words with the game designer. Um, however, Sheriff McGinty was adamant that these claims are groundless. Just like the ground under his feet when he fell down into devil's well. He didn't have any ground under his feet then. I'm sure my deputy would have discovered any signs of foul play, he said. We're looking at someone who was a little worked up, who'd had a drink or two. It's tragic, but accidents happen. All right, well, according to... Carmen, the police didn't even look at the spot on the cliff where poor Nicholas Webster, my dear friend, where he fell or was pushed. So what the heck? Also, it was early morning. Let's see. So he did a death uh, early morning. That's, that's all we've got is early morning. Haven't been able to narrow it down any more than that. Webster's widow. Oh boy. Oh boy. I think I know who the killer is already. Webster's widow, Sherry, said in a statement. What could Sherry sound like? I have faith in the sheriff's office. And I'm so grateful for their help. Nick was the love of my life, and I don't know what I'll do without him. Sherry's a smoker. I guess I can't assume that, because it may... Well, she, Sherry talks like a smoker. Mrs. Webster did not address whether Old Scratch Tavern will reopen, but Perdition residents will surely miss their favorite neighborhood barkeep. Got a feeling... She's she's gonna sell sell out to the developers, right? Quick quick little ASMR break. Heidi, there is a correct solution if you're paying attention. In fact, let's let's do a little okay. Let's, why don't we follow along? We can all make sure that 
we're kind of together on this. So date of death. I'm just going to put the most important facts. Let's just start a little, little dossier up here of the, the most important facts. Okay. Let's do this right. Let's do this right. If we're going to do it, let's do it right. I should I should have had this ready to go, but was wasn't sure what direction I was gonna go with this. So bear with me. Radio. Okay. Let's do something like this. Unfortunately, we can't do the... What I'd like to do is be able to change the opacity on that. Can't. But we're okay. We're okay with this. However, I do want to change this to be... Black. This is not good. Okay. So that's a that's a fact we know. As we get more, like really, as we really get into it, I'll, I'll add stuff. But. I'd like to know the time and stuff. Anyway, let's move on. Let's actually, I'm gonna make this a group, sorry. Doing some behind the scenes stuff real quick. Make this a folder. Murder stuff. Put this in the said folder. There we go. Got one, one folder for both those things. Should be able to control the opacity of that. It really should. But let's not let's not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Because pretty good. Doesn't work so well once we switch. Actually, it works even better here. All right. Carol Neubauer, a member of the Perdition Billiards Club, said, I, I can't just keep coming up with voices for these people. Old Scratch's pool championship won't be the same without Nick cheering us on. So Carol Neubauer, Perdition Billiards Club. Okay. Donna Goddard, a longtime patron of Webster's Bar, said, It's heartbreaking. I'm just doing the same voice. Everybody in this town, they've all got the same voice. 
which makes it difficult to, to voice ID people because they all sound exactly the same. Donna Goddard, Goddard, a longtime patron of Webster's Bar, said, It's heartbreaking. Nick made the best old-fashioned in town. And I know I won't be the only person having one in his honor tonight. Donna, bit of a drinker. I mean, it's a bar, so expected. Funeral services will be held Sunday at 11 a.m. at Boggs Funeral Home, followed by a reception at Old Scratch Tavern. I'm surprised they called it Boggs Funeral Home and not something like Mephistopheles Funeral Home. But now what I'm interested in here is really the flip side of this article. Okay, on the flip side of this article, it's talking about new developments for Devil's Well, which remember is where Nicholas's body was found. Okay. The scenic waterfall just outside Perdition could be included in the sale of the land if negotiations proceed. And negotiations can only proceed, probably if they get the land that Old Scratch Tavern was on. Nicholas Webster, I'm, I'm guessing he didn't want to sell. His widow, Sherry, perhaps might be more amenable to selling. Oh, and this is by Boyd Blumenthal. The, the article on the front was by Mitzi Blumenthal. Oh, no, Sutherland. Well, I'm, a I'm an incredible detective. Names, it's like a, it's like a steel trap in my mind. Boyd Blumenthal. Monday's town council meeting turned contentious when a preliminary hearing about selling a parcel of mun municipal land ended in threats against the council members. Well, I'll be. The meeting, scheduled originally for 30 minutes, no, there's no such thing as a 30-minute meeting. We all know that. Continued for over an hour when Joan Campbell stood up during the question and answer period. The tone of the discussion quickly became tense. Campbell identified herself as the founder and sole member of the Save Devil's Well Foundation, an organization she claimed is devoted to protecting the wilderness around Devil's Well. Mm. Pybe, that is also a, you know, these are hopefully you are, um, you know, just saying this stuff based on speculation. Hopefully there are no spoilers here. I'm going to assume that everything here is just speculation. All right, so Joan Campbell. That's a name we probably need to write down, huh? Although I think Carmen said she had it whittled down to four suspects. So... Maybe, um, maybe we don't need to consider everybody here. Maybe if I really need to choose between four people or something, then I don't want to be unnecessarily uh, complicating matters. Campbell accused the council of accepting bribes, claimed that Devil's Well is a sacred site that deserves official protection. She ended by threatening to come to the counselor's homes and do to you what you want to do to our environment. Uh, you know? Security attempted to remove Campbell from the meeting, but she resisted, injuring a bystander in the process. No one will seriously hurt, said Councilman Dale Lynch, but none of us expected this to get so ugly. Just goes to show. The proposed sale would include roughly 600 acres of land west of town, most of which is old growth forest. Ooh, old growth forest, that's good for making guitars. Just saying. As well as several residential and commercial properties. There's no word yet about the purpose of this sale, but Lynch stated that the council considers the deal advantageous. Wait, Lynch says that. The council, okay, all right. 
We think this could greatly enrich our town, said Lynch. But, of course, if, if everyone's against it, the deal won't go forward. Hey, Warbraven. Okay. All right, so that's that's Dale Lynch. So Dale Lynch, Dale Lynch wants this, wants this development to, to move forward. It's going to be good for the town. It's going to be good for the council. But he's running into some resistance from, from some of the... Some of the town folks. Incidentally, I mean, maybe this is important, maybe this isn't, but Holiday Craft Market, Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Perdition Veterans Hall. Vendors include quilters, woodworkers, and the rest of it's cut off. All right. So we've got that. Okay, we got the information we needed. I, I still think the development of Devil's Well is going to prove to be the uh, more interesting of the two sides of that. All right, so the rest of Carmen's evidence, she's got a little dossier here. Okay. Okay, so yeah, these are, these are names that we've heard. Let's see how many. One, two, three, Four. So okay, it's one of these four people. Let's let's uh, take a little gander at at our suspects, shall we? Before we do that, right? Yeah, gotta make sure. Everybody knows he was he was the victim. So the first suspect is Donna Goddard, who, remember, loved the way Nick made old fashions. So ostensibly, she was a Nick fan. Date of birth, September 30th, 1980. Gender female, height 5'8". Race, black hair, black eyes, brown aliases, none. Address, 9805 Castania Road. Vehicle, a silver 2015 Lincoln Continental. Okay, 2015, same year. Oh, that's the present, I guess, in this. Vehicle registration number, 500 MIL. Background check, no criminal arrests. Education, an associate's degree in business, Perdition Community College, employment, real estate agent at Hoosier Realtor. Okay. Notes. Okay. My favorite regular at Old Scratch. Wait, who made these notes? Oh, Carmen made these notes. Okay, so... Gotta, gotta do, I'm sorry, but this has to be done it as Carmen. Okay, if we're going to do this, as I said, do it right. Don't do it at all. Carmen on Donna. My favorite regular at Old Scratch. Comes in three or four times a week. Kills at karaoke. Mops the floor with the competition at pool. Always tips well. Handled the sale of the bar when Nick bought it in 2005. Seller was Lou Laval, his father. Wait, seller was Lou Laval. His father opened it in 1957. Very involved around town. Women's Choir, Billiards Club, Brown County Hiking Club. Please, like anybody paying attention to this, Shout out if like you hear something, something sticks out to you, let me know. Last person to leave the bar the night Nick died. Left maybe an hour before closing time, which is late for her. She seemed on edge. When I asked if everything was okay, she shrugged it off. Left a note on her menu and a matchbox on the counter for Nick, but he never got the chance to see it. Oh, wait a minute. I've got a matchbox. I've got a matchbox. 
I've got a matchbox. It's not a real matchbox, by the way, but it does have um, a phone number on the back. Look at that. Now, why do you suppose Donna Goddard, who's a regular at Old Scratch Tavern, would be trying to get Nick her phone number? Nick's married, first of all. Second of all, what's in the box? What's in the box? You stay over there. Um, so interesting to note, right? Like he's married. She's given him her phone number. She is a realtor. So it might be, she might have a motive for Nick whoop, to sell the bar despite her protests, right? To the contrary. All right. At the funeral reception, we talked about how Old Scratch was like a second home to her and how everyone there could see what a special place Nick had made it. Looked like she'd been crying a lot. We talked afterwards, just reminiscing. Then she said something really odd. Like, if only I'd been faster. Maybe I could have made a difference. Before I could ask what she meant, Nolan came over. And she started telling him about a job opening for a fry cook at the Limestone Diner. He was grateful for the lead. We've all been struggling to find work since Old Scratch closed. It's hard to believe we'll ever find another job as great. <sighs> Went over to her house hoping I could talk to her about the night Nick died. Or maybe like ask her what she meant by that weird thing that she said at the funeral. Said she'd been having a rough time that night, was preoccupied with some work problems. And now in quotes, then I decided to go for a drive, try and clear my thoughts, but it only got worse from there. When I asked about the stuff she left at the bar, e, i.e. the uh, matchbox, she got really anxious and said, we shouldn't talk here and hustled me out of the house in a hurry. Okay, but then they didn't finish the conversation, I'm guessing. Okay. Tried to call her, no answer. Called her office. They said she left on a business trip, not sure when she's supposed to get back. Okay, so Donna Goddard. Okay. Let's keep this up to snuff here. She's suspect number one. Um, anything? She's a realtor. Maybe wanted. Maybe wanted to sell bar. I don't know. Okay, we're not gonna have enough room for all this stuff. We're gonna have to make it smaller. Maybe. Maybe she wanted him, maybe she was trying to get him to sell the bar to these more nefarious people. Maybe she wouldn't have resorted to murder, but the other people would have. All right, let's move on. There's four of these. Suspect number two, Joan Campbell, born 1979, female, 5'6". Alias is Joan Landau, married name. Drives a 1975 Volkswagen Beetle. 
Oh my gosh. Background check. Ooh, Joan. Arrested for assault, 1997, charges dropped. Arrested for trespassing, 2011, charges dropped. One no contest divorce. Has a BA in ecology. So this is the woman who was super aggressive. Yes. This is the woman who was very aggressive at the council meeting. Very strong thoughts about Devil's Well. She's got a BA in ecology. She's a bee farmer. She sells honey at local farmer's markets. Maybe she where she gets her honey? I, I don't know. Notes. Her house is the nearest property to Old Scratch. Not much else nearby. Eccentric, to put it mildly. On nights the bar is busy, she'll sit in a chair out by the roadside and curse people driving by. And not foul language, she genuinely believes she's putting hexes on people. Apparently she's been claiming some evil corporation from Indianapolis wants to sow the land near Devil's Well with poison or something. Sounds pretty out there to me, but I've heard stranger things. Although I haven't seen stranger things, at least not the latest season, I guess. Then again, she's also been saying Nick got what he deserved. So who knows? Went over to her place, hoping to ask her some questions, but she said she won't talk to interlopers from old scratch bent on destroying life. Then she threatened to shoot me if I didn't get off her property. So I left. It's probably smart. Someone threatens you with a gun tells you to get off their property. Best, best to do that. I've never understood why she hates the bar so much. Just that the bad blood goes back a long time. Wish I could ask Nick. There are lots of things I wish we could talk about these days. Snuck onto her property when I knew she'd be in town. Took a picture of something that looks promising, but I'm still waiting on the results from the Deviant Tracker Boot Tread database. Wish I could afford the pro version, because the light is not impressing me. All right, so Joan Campbell, a woman of action, possibly radicalized by, what's this group? Name of this group? Save Devil's Well Foundation. Now, she took a picture of something that looks promising. Where, is that, can that picture be here? Oh. Yes, we got, this must be the picture she's referring to. And it's a picture of a boot. And it's a picture of a boot and it's a box of matches from the bar right there. Okay. This is true. Lone Star. This is what she does. She just sits by the roadside, casting hexes on people. That's what she likes to do. Okay, so, I mean, I have no frame. Of, I, I guess the, the if I can use this as a sort of reference for the boot size, I would say it's about a, an 11 Maybe 11 and a half. Maybe that's why that's included there. But so it wouldn't be the same. This is she she took this picture at Jones. Why would the matches be there? It wouldn't be this box, right? I feel like the the box of matches is maybe there for size comparison. Okay, so suspect number two, and boy, I, I'm telling you, I think, I think, look, I'm going to go through with the rest of this, but I think we got our man proverbial, proverbially, we've got our proverbial man, it's Joan, 
Fucking Joan. Okay, suspect. Number two. Joan Campbell. Beekeeper. Uh, radical liberal. Um, violent. Green Deal Nerd Witch. Okay. That's a pretty good summary of Joan. I mean, it's not wrong. Okay. So all this talk about like things going back for her, right? 1997, bought the bar in 2005. Her married name was Landau. It's not, not, it's not none of that is clicking for me yet. All right, suspect number three. Let's take a moment here. Let's, let's, Take a look at let's hide everything in the hide this for a moment. Take a look at what we got going on here. It's a lot of stuff, a lot of information going on. We're on suspect number three right now, and that's Chris Thompson. All right, let's, let's do Chris. Take a quick moment. Quick ASMR moment. All right, Chris Thompson, date of birth, 1992, 511. Address, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait. Oh, this is a, Chris Thompson is a police officer, not, not the police officer from, no, Sheriff McGinty, no, okay. He's got a BA in criminal justice, got a 2016 Toy, Toyota Prius, and then a 2012 Dodge Durango is his official vehicle. Yeah, he's a deputy Perdition Sheriff's Office since 2016. All right. Notes. He went to high school with my sister. She says he was popular, but had a reputation as a ladies' man, very outdoorsy. Always hunting or fishing, whatever's in season. Went to talk to him at the Sheriff's Office on Tuesday. He confirmed that Nick's blood alcohol level wasn't off the charts. 0 0.06 is tipsy, but not seriously impaired. When I pressed him for more info, he told me the details aren't being made available to the public. Said Nick's death was tragic, but accidents just happen sometimes. Yeah, right. Interesting. Hmm. This is almost, this is exactly what the police chief said. It's tragic, but accidents happen. He also said he's sure his deputy would have discovered any signs of foul play. And yet Carmen said that nobody was at the location where Nick a fell. So I don't know. 
Okay. Visited him at home. He seemed annoyed at first, but he let me in. Probably didn't hurt that I brought pizza. He should have brought donuts. Snooped around a bit while he was in the kitchen getting plates and stole an open envelope that was at the bottom of a pile of mail on the table. Mostly talked about... I swear, I thought this said hobbits. <laughs> Mostly talked about hobbies. He's in the hiking club, too, apparently. Said he's been helping Sherry with some stuff around the house. Oh, has he? Been helping Sherry with stuff around the house, has he? Just trying to be a friend in her time of need. That's my Chris Thompson voice. On my way out, I took a peek into his car and noticed something that might be useful. Mm, is it referring to took a peek into his car? Does that mean there's another? I mean, there's a bunch of stuff here, but I'm not 100% sure which of this stuff. What is the thing that she noticed in his car? Uh, well, oh, must be this. Yeah, because Toyota Prius. So this boot in his car, in his Toyota Prius. What else do we have there? A pair of boots, a bag, can of a can of paint, maybe. But I'm I'm sure. The, these, the treads, the boot taken by uh, the, the Campbell place, and Chris's boots, they look pretty similar to me. Okay, okay. So this, that's what this is here. This is the... This is a pick of boots. Ran into him at the Limestone Diner. So the Limestone Diner is where apparently a lot of people are uh, going to get jobs and, and the replacement for Old Scratch Tavern. That's, that's what it seems to be. Gave me a bunch of platitudes about moving on with your life as if he has any idea what I'm going through. After he was done condescending to me, he went on to pay his bill and left his pocket notebook sitting out on the table. Couldn't resist tearing out a page. Too bad I didn't get more. Hmm. So she tore out a page from his pocket notebook. And here's that. We'll, we'll check this out in a second. Showed up at my house later that night, scared me half to death banging on the door. Accused me of theft, threatened to press charges. I know he won't. If he couldn't even figure out that Nick was murdered, there's no way he'll be able to prove anything. Well, being able to prove theft and murder... Not really, it's pretty different. Okay, so let's... I am going to grab some water. I will be right back. Y'all... Hang in there if you can. I'll leave up the notes we have so far and then also cut to this camera so you can see what's going on. I'll be right back. I need some water. Don't go anywhere. If you leave, you know, we're not going to know who did what. 
right back. Forgot my cup. Back. Got my water. I just got these are candied pecans. It's a huge mistake. I um discovered I love candied pecans. Cause they were an ingredient in the those bowl place salads that I got and now I'm hooked 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 on candied pecans so that was that was not wise and yet I did it so what can you do all right so again So far we've got, well, let's, let's, before we put the information about Chris onto the board here, let's take a look at the journal page that old Carmen Rojas managed to snipe. This guy's a police officer. It doesn't take much for a police officer to just tease you and I'm going to read this silently to myself <laughs> okay looks like a, a page from his official journal, his, his official, sorry, his official uh, police journal. And the date would be, is December 7th, the date of Nicholas Webster's death. 134, traffic stop, red Honda going 60 miles per hour in his 25 mile per hour zone. Ames Avenue by Brewer Hill Cemetery. Ticket. 134. I assume he's writing military time. Okay. 312. Report of suspicious person. 13 CRGG. No sign of unusual activity on arrival. Search property. Called in all clear after confirming building secure. 331. Traffic stop. Silver Lincoln tail. Oh, oh, we all know we know the Silver Lincoln, I think, right? That um John Campbell. Silver Lincoln tail lights out. CR sixty six and Eagleton Road warning. Four oh one collision between blue Cadillac and black Lincoln, Hawkins Road, 
near the Higgledy-Piggledy Convenience Store, no serious injuries, booked Lincoln driver for DUI. 637, possible dead body called in Devil's Well. Wait, so that was at 637? In the morning. Yes, of course. This is, yeah. Did I start on the wrong page here? No, I didn't. Okay. All right. So there was a traffic stop at 3.31 a.m. with the silver Lincoln with the taillights out. And I think that would be Joan Campbell. No, sorry, not Joan. Joan has the beetle. That would be Donna Goddard. So it's unlikely if Donna Goddard... Well, I don't know. Hmm. So this 312 report is definitely the, the report of uh, Nicholas Webster going over the, the cliff. And then a traffic stop just 20 minutes, not even 20 minutes later, they stopped Donna Goddard. Gave her a warning. Okay. 637, possible dead body called in in Devil's Well. Confirmed no signs of life. Called coroner. No ID, but able to confirm victim's identity. Secured scene. 659, made initial search of area. No signs of struggle on Riverbank. Fall from the ledge seems likely. So this kind of like confirms what Carmen was saying that she doesn't even think the police went up to the ledge to see if there were signs of a struggle. Looks like he just kind of assumed it. 729, coroner arrived, agreed fall is likely cause of death. Says he's probably been dead three to four hours. So 730, been dead three to four hours. So 330 to 430. And 3.30, he did a traffic stop of Donna Goddard. So if she had killed him and then was driving away, could be, could be Donna. All right, 8.45, went to 2CR66 to talk to neighbor who found body. Stated she was out for a walk shortly after 6 o'clock when she discovered the body on the rocks beside the waterfall, then returned home to call police. 10.22, back to scene. Search of water underway. Haven't found much so far besides some empty beer bottles. Probably just litter. 11.17, gave update to McGinty. He agrees with accident scenario. We'll proceed accordingly. 12.32, Coroner okayed removal of remains. Morty from Bo Boggs Funeral Home to pick up. 1305, told Sherry. She took it about as expected. Did my best to calm her down. Reassured her foul play unlikely. Made sure she called her mother to come down and stay. So she's not alone at a time like this. Well, it's very kind of him. Okay, so, so is there a map here? Oh, there's a locked, look at this. This is the locked bag that uh, Carmen was talking about. And add for some more. I gotta tell you, I'm in. I'm, this is pretty riveting to me. Maybe not to you. So that's something we need to, we need to, you know, amend this. Maybe wanted to sell bar, but 
was pulled over just after murder. Now, didn't Carmen say she'd stayed a little later than usual? Pretty sure she said that. Hey, Caladan. All right, more, we've got more stuff here. Look, at, that's actually quite a bit of stuff. I didn't realize quite how much, it's a lot here. But we still have one more, wait, so, okay. I don't know, man, I, I'm, I'm thinking Chris, Chris is a philanderer. Um, but maybe not a murderer, but uh, you know, I don't want my biases to come in to cloud my thinking. So let's get Chris on the board. Suspect number three. Chris Thompson. Cop. Really? Do we need to? That's pretty much all we got to say. All the info we need on Chris. He is a cop. Draw your own conclusions on what that means. <laughs> Caladan, that is super nice of you to say. It's definitely wrong, but uh, I appreciate it. I, I try. Buster, you. This is a good point, right? Donna and Chris, or Donna and Chris. I was thinking Sherry and Chris. So, you know, still early days yet. We got one more. Why did it blow up the size of? I guess it's okay. It's depending on the size. Okay, perfect. And hi, TP. The last suspect. Oh, no. Suspect number four. Nicholas Webster's extremely sad. I'm sure this is empty. Let me just kind of get it out of here. Oh, something fall out of there? Oh, my gosh. This must be a very important piece of evidence. Dangerous, do not eat. Desiccant. I think we just found the murder weapon. All right, let's get this all out of here. Only have, it's like our own scene of the crime that we got going on right here. Let's only have stuff it's relevant, All right? <clears throat> Let's see what Carmen has to say about Sherry Webster. Um, date of birth, 1982, 5'7", blue eyes, maiden name, Hauser. No. Drives a silver Mercedes Benz. Background check. Arrested for shoplifting. Twice. Charges were dropped. Employment. Teaches at the Perdition Fitness Center. Very cool outfit. I'm wearing a 
a ripped jean jacket because we're talking about a murder at a dive bar. Someone tried poisoning me. Oh no. Pivy, <clears throat> you think this is Christy ish? I guess. I guess it is. Um, and definitely there are some Christie murders where it turns out the spouse is, is the killer. All right, but let's see what, let's not speculate. <laughs> let's see what Carmen had to say about Sherry. Notes, at the funeral, she kept telling me how highly her husband thought of me. And how grateful she was I'd always been there for him. <clears throat> Losing Nick has been hard on her, but she's really been gracious. She and Nick were sort of an odd couple. She's so polished, and Nick, at his best, was kind of a mess. A lovable mess, but the kind of guy who buys a round of drinks for the whole bar, then forgets his wallet. She could be kind of hard on him sometimes. Like once he missed their anniversary, and he slept in the bar for a week he was crazy about her, called her the love of his life. Courtney, who works the day shift at Old Scratch, loves Sherry's bar classes at the fitness center, says Sherry's kind of a perfectionist, but in a good way. Apparently she was accepted to study ballet in Indianapolis when she was 14, but her scholarship fell through. She broke the news that she doesn't have plans to reopen Old Scratch. Uh-oh, did not know that. I don't know how I could bear it. Not when there's a memory of... Oh, wait, no, Sherry has the smoker's voice. I don't know how I could bear it. She's not a smoker. I gotta change... I gotta have to amend Sherry's voice. She's a workout fanatic. I don't know how I could bear it. Not when there's a memory of poor Nikki around every corner. Sure, sure. Sure, Sherry. Stopped by the Webster's house to drop off some condolence cards. Told me she was staying staying at a friend's house the night Nick died. Hmm. Hmm. When I brought up the possibility of foul play, she absolutely refused to consider it. Nick had been behaving. Nick had been behaving so strangely, seeing things that weren't there, drinking too much. I'm sure he didn't even realize what he was doing. She looked like she was about to start crying, so I didn't stay for much longer after that. All right, so she was staying at a friend's house the night her husband died. Interesting. Who could that friend be? Asks I. Hmm. All right, so there's no there's no attachments for this for her. Oops. So I don't have much to write up for her apart from one very important, one very important thing. It's extremely important. Spe spec number four, Sherry Webster. Widow. 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 Murderer. Um, hmm. 
I just think sleeping at a friend's house I think we just let the let that fact stand on its own. Sleeping at a friend's house. All right, so What did I miss here? Because Okay, so cuz I have other things here. I have other items, other photos that I think would be pointed. I think I missed a couple. Let's go through this once more real quick. So for Donna, okay, balls around town. She left a note on her menu and a matchbox on the counter. So we got the matchbox, did not find the note on the menu. Is there a menu in here? Oh, there's the deviant tracker stuff for the boots. Let's, we'll check that out in a second. Oh, here's the menu. Okay. So this is the old scratch menu. So I wasn't, oh, and it says it right there. We need to talk. So she wrote that we need to talk to Nick the night he died. And, well, look at this. Would you look at that? She circled certain words on the back of the map, being very, very surreptitious and very sneaky. And if we look at the words that were circled, starting with, we need to talk, we need to talk about Devil's Well. Land. Wednesday, 11 p.m. So Wednesday, but he, no, he died. He died before that meeting could happen. Because Wednesday would have been, where's the newspaper? Yeah, he died on Saturday morning, December 7th. So she left him a note saying to meet on Wednesday. Wait, when was that council meeting? That was on Monday. Okay, so we got the menu. Let's see what else we missed. Let's see if we just tie any of these things to These readouts. There's quite a few things here. There's an email chain. There's some some boot print IDing. There's a security cam photo. My gosh. Is that about it? Oh, there's a, somebody got a ticket. 
let's tie this. Oh, this is the tail lights out ticket. So this was given, this is the ticket that I think was given to Donna Goddard. By Chris Thompson, badge 33, right? At 3.31 a.m. Just a few minutes. That's the window, the window for death there. Donna Goddard was out and about, but she was saying she was, she wished she was fast enough and she wished she had gotten to him sooner. And maybe that's why, you know, she was planning to meet him on Wednesday. He was already dead by Wednesday. So that makes sense that she would be, um, she would be expressing remorse about that, wishing that she had moved quicker. It doesn't really explain anything about her being out at that night unless she was actually going there. If only I'd been faster, I could have made a difference. Um... She decided, she does say she decided to go for a drive to try and clear her thoughts, but it only got worse from there. And now she's on a business trip. Okay. We have a, what appears to be, let me go to this camera angle. What appears to be an email thread, kind of a next door app kind of thing. See what we got here from Nancy Blanton Carmichael Road residents beware if you live on Carmichael Road and want to sleep through the night good luck I didn't get a wink of sleep last night because my neighbor's inconsiderate hussy of a girlfriend shows up to his house at all hours to be as disruptive as possible I swear she knocked over every single thing in his backyard letting herself into his house then she turned on all the lights which shine right into my bedroom windows. I don't know what possessed her to start playing music so late, but I assume it was intended to annoy me personally. Thankfully, it stopped after a couple of hours, but not before I was robbed of my beauty rest. This isn't the first time they have been inappropriately loud. You'd think they'd have the decency to be ashamed of themselves, but no, they're determined to make a mockery of law-abiding residents of this peaceful community. And then some, uh, <clears throat> some responses. This was also on 12, seven from Helen Garbinski. Oh, so that's what all the noise was around two thirty AM last night. That was on 12, seven. So maybe someone was making noise intentionally to cover up whatever was going on. Dale Lynch replies, maybe try a sleep mask and earplugs. Belva Washington, why so judgmental, Nancy? I agree they could be more considerate of their neighbors, but the heart wants what it wants. As famously stated by Woody Allen when pressed about his relationship with his own, his girlfriend's adopted daughter. Besides, who are you to cast the first stone as if you hadn't committed a few indiscretions in your life? <laughs> immediately after Belva Washington's reply, Norman Blanton, who I assume is Nancy Blanton's husband, responds, what? <laughs> okay, so here's another, this is a, a new thread here from Mia Romer, entitled, Hey. Hey, I know it's last minute, but is anyone going to this banishing ceremony out by Devil's Well tonight? I've seen flyers for it around town and it sounds cool, but also I don't want to get murdered or whatever. Anyone know who's organizing it or what their deal is? Amy Kaplansky says, no idea who's running it, but I wouldn't hang out with a bunch of strangers in the woods at night. I agree, Amy. Actually, sounds like fun. Dory Norville chimes in. I can't make this ritual. I'm at a coven meeting in Indianapolis tonight. 
but I promise you'll come to no harm. Mia Romer then chimes in. She's the original poster. <clears throat> Update. So I wound up going by myself and it was totally bonkers. I got there at like three in the morning and it was just me and this lady with a basket of weird herbs. I'm sure the lady was uh, Linda Campbell. Linda Campbell? Oh, I got it up here. Joan Campbell. We spent like 30 or 40 minutes burning herbs and chanting. At one point, I heard something crashing around the underbrush and got worried she'd actually summon something, but I guess it was just an animal or whatever. Then she hands me the shovel and tells me to start walking. I thought she was going to kill me for sure. Instead, she made me pick up a dead fox off the side of the highway and carry it over to this old dive bar. She made me put the fox on the ground by the mailbox. She covered it with the ashes from the fire and yelled, for vinegar Tom, whatever that means. After that, she thanked me for helping support the cause and asked if I needed help getting back to my car. Anyway, I guess perdition has its own witch, but at least I didn't die. 710 would go again. So that's definitely our suspect number two, um, who is getting someone to take a dead fox and leave it on the doorstep of the old scratch tavern. I don't know anything about Vinegar Tom. No clue. No clue about Vinegar Tom. All right. What else do we got here? Let's let's take a look at this at this analysis of boot prints. Okay. Result number one. These boots were are women's boots. This okay, there's a couple here. Oh, there's a, there's actually a lot. Like how many boots am I gonna have to look through? All right, we need to compare these boots to can we go to this? We need to compare these boots to the boot print in this photo, and then also to the boots found in Chris Thompson's Prius. So let's start with, they're the same boots. Okay, so these are the same boots. So the boots that made these marks were definitely the boots that are in Chris Thompson's Prius. And those boots are not matching these, not matching these. Nope, 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 nope. Be the last pair. Here we go, right here. These boots right here. Result number 12. Manufacturer, Wood River, model the Fortress. Available from 1999 to the present, and they're men's. Okay. Um, I mean, that's these, definitely. But I'm not sure what that gives us. I mean, it lets you see the track. But we I didn't really need this to see the track. I could see the track just from the bottom of the boot. But anyway, I guess the the upshot of this is these boots made these prints. And these prints, if we go back to our notes. Where was that? Um, I 
Wait a minute. Those prints were on Jones' property. So what was Chris doing on Jones' property? Jones' property is the nearest house to Old Scratch Tavern. We know that, right? Okay. Interesting. Okay, we've got a couple other things here, and I'm not... There's another pair of boots here, but I don't know... They're not referenced by... They're not referenced by anything that I can see. So why do we have this other picture of boots? Let's just go ahead and see if we can ID these boots based on this uh, deviant tracker. Let's track the deviant. These are definitely women's boots, I think. Um, well, no. No, Chris was apparently at Joan's house. I mean, she could wear men's boots, but the, the point is the boots were, there's a picture of the boots in Chris's car. So they're definitely Chris's boots. And this looks like These look like these boots, but I just want to be a hundred percent sure. Yeah, these are these boots. This picture is of these boots. And these boots are by L.L. Berry, and they're women's. Um, but their tread doesn't match anything, and I'm not even sure where this picture came from. I don't think it's referenced by Carmen's notes. If it is, I I missed it, which is possible. I could I could have missed it. Um. Right, yes, it was it was Joan's house. Well, something I well it could be that because Joan's house is so close to the old scratch bar that he was just near there because he was going to the bar or because he was doing some of the chicanery that was causing, uh, that was trying to, maybe he was trying to scare Nick. So if he was part of that, if he was the one that was setting the fires, although we already know that Joan had somebody put a dead fox in front of a tavern. So it seems like Joan, that was more Joan's doing, right? That's what it seems like. Okay, so then we also have this note and it says, interlopers will be banished to the bottom of the devil's well. So somebody is uh, wishing interlopers ill. And interestingly, quite interestingly, whoa, oh, it's just kind of creepy. Shit. Didn't see that for a second. Um, this must be the picture that shit, that Carmen was referring to. A picture of the devil. The first picture of the devil. It appears to be, it's security cam footage. Now this is taken at, no, this can't be right. This can't be right.
Look at this. Take a look at this, fellow investigators. This, this is a picture of Carmen and the deceased, Nick Webster. Okay. Now, apart from the quite frightening mask outside the door, you can see the devil's mask outside the door, something else interesting about this. The time. December 7th, 3.33 a.m. So Nick was still alive at 3.33 a.m. when um, Donna was pulled over. According to this report, right? The traffic stop was at 331. Now, how does this, so I don't, I don't get that. So 333, there's a half hour between the 331 traffic stop and the 401 collision that Chris made. What is interesting, also interesting about this picture, I'm sure quite intentional, right? You may not be able to make it out here, but I can. There is a, a height measure, you know, as we usually have at the, at the doors uh, going out of places that get robbed a lot. And according to that height measure, the person, the devil, is six feet tall. If the devil is six feet tall, Donna was 5'8", or is 5'8", sorry. Joan is 5'6". Chris is 5'11". And Sherry is 5'7". Now, unless these any of these boots have such a giant heel on them. Let's make sure these, I uh, would have to be like a couple, of, it would have to be like a two or three inch heel. I don't think so. I don't think so. I believe that um, the devil outside the door in this photograph has to be Chris Thompson. However, if that's 3.33 a.m., then how did he have a 3.31 a.m. traffic stop? And we know that that actually happens at 3.31 a.m. We know that that's not fake. I'm a little flummoxed. Six feet. Maybe a little shorter, but no. I mean, it really looks like about six feet tall. Okay. We've still got a couple more things to hit. Some of this stuff seems contradictory. Now, we have the letter, right, that was taken, Chris Thompson, 131 Carmichael Road, let's see what's in it, let's see what we got.
there's nothing, but there is an interesting kind of writing along the edges that look like if we fold it a different way, perhaps, perhaps if we invert the folding, let's try that. Let's fold it backwards, see what we get. Yes, if we fold it backwards, it lines up. But it lines up to read gibberish. Gibberish. Now, this is definitely going to be a shift cipher, right? So, okay. We can do this one by one. We can. Take a guess. Let me write this down. This is starting to be a big mess here. But we gotta know what, what is said. Because it's even hard to read the letters, even the, the scramble letters. I think what we got is uh, okay, I can't even tell. Is that a U or a I think it's D is that another D or is that an O? Maybe O, O apostrophe U, Z, B, J, W, U, P, V, F, F. B, P, V, P, J, O, G, J, G, it just doesn't quite actually line up. I can like hold it at a weird J, G, L. Uh, C C P U S P Z U I H D B U B H D J O question mark and then dash and F. All right. So somebody wrote a secret message to Chris Thompson. Now, let's say it's Sherry. Let's say this is Sherry's handwriting. All right? That would mean that the C or the F becomes a C. So in order to make the F the C, we have to go backwards. Three, four. So a negative four cipher, right? Negative three cipher, sorry, negative three cipher. Does that work for any of these others?
So would see the things that some of these letters, I'm not a hundred percent sure that they actually are what they were. Maybe that would be a, and if that's an O, C, Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Um, let's try another one of these. Definitely up. UP was pretty clear. So that that has to be whatever whatever we got there. That has to be. And with a negative three, that just becomes RM, which doesn't make much sense as a, as a word. So maybe negative three is not right. If it's Joan who sent the letter, so let's do that. If it's Joan who sent the letter, Yeah, if it's Joan, then it's a plus four cipher for that F to become a J. So let's try these, some of these with a plus four. What is up with a plus four? That also doesn't work. YT? Hmm. Am I knocking down the, maybe I'm making this harder than it needs to be by assuming what that last letter is. I'm assuming that last letter is the first letter of the name of the person who wrote it. Because if it's, I'm going to do one more. If it was Donna, if it was Donna, then it's a minus two cipher. In which case, up is SN. Again, doesn't mean anything. ZB. Let's see if F is O. This is not very uh, exciting to be doing in real time. I apologize. I wish these letters were clearer. That's got to be an O. That can't be a D. That's got to be an O. So for, for ZBJW, Let's look for repeating letters here. VFF. Okay. Minus two, that would be doesn't work. Does it work? What does UP besides up? Obviously, what 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 kind of shift does UP need? T O minus one. Dude, if it's minus one, I'm gonna be upset at myself. UP with a minus one is. Is two. Do any of these others make sense with a minus one? Y A I No, doesn't. U F F 
E E kind of makes sense. B P V. No, no, no. These do not make sense. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to that because. No, there's no return address and no from on, on the envelope. I mean, I think it's probably from Sherry, but it's not really helping me crack that code, although we know it's going to be a shifting letter code because it was really, really like clear in the instructions that we needed to look out for shifting letter codes. There's a couple other things that I want to read. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Okay, these are some journal entries. These are, I believe these are Nicholas's journal entries. So this was part of what was found on his desk. Okay. Let's pull back so we can all we can all see these. I guess you can't read them. But okay, so November 8th, biggest fire yet. This was a close one. November 10th, remember to pick up Darling's gift. Remember, once he he calls her the love of his life, he's gotta pick up the gift. Remember, she made him sleep in the bar for a week. when he forgot. Thank you for hanging out, baby. Stuff. It could be, but it was pretty explicit in the instructions that we need to look out for those just shifting letter ciphers. November 12th, shadow by loading dock, 3.13 a.m. Don't be late for dinner. Reservation tomorrow. Don't want a repeat of last year. We all know what that was. November 16th, note and mailbox. You'll burn for what you've done. Owl on Cam 2, 10.32 p.m. November 19th, fire by loading dock, 1.56 a.m. Burned wall pretty bad, but no structural damage. Still no footage. Prints, though. The devils? Now, we do see a pattern on that boot that matches... Nope, 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 nope. It's not the same as uh, Chris's boot. Wait a minute. <clears throat> uh, one more thing. I'm going to call him love this fucker. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It is the same as, as Chris's boot. It's just not... The drawing is just not that... It, it's rather low fidelity. This is the same. Same. Chris's boot. Chris of the Devil. The Devil's Prince right here. Hmm. More fires. Find out when Darling's anniversary present will be ready. Okay, nothing here. I can see the Devil in the woods. I'm just not fast enough to catch him. 
Wow. Oh, and then listen to this. From November to November 23rd. What is she thinking? Why would she go behind my back like that? November 24th, another note. Are you ready to die? Something bad is coming. Got to be ready. November 27th, I found proof right there in the open. Can't make it out, but I know what it means and what I have to do. Fire in the woods, 4.14 a.m. November 28th, see at Mother's, thank God, dead raccoon in parking lot, see being Sherry, I assume. December 1st, fire was big this time. Almost didn't catch it. Not sure I'll be so lucky next time. December 3rd, Nolan and Courtney witnessed for me. Put the papers somewhere safe. I bet you those papers are in here. December 4th, note in mailbox. When you are cold in the ground, who will be sorry you're gone? These days, I'm not so sure. Still can't crack this code. December 6th, moved front door cam again. Maybe I'll finally catch the devil in the act if he doesn't get me first. He did catch the devil in the act. On the same night that he was got. December 7th, the code repeats. I knew it. Okay, I'm just going to do this real quick because I'm, if, if the code to this is 666, then I, I deserve to just be able to... Okay, it's not 666. Okay. I'm, my faith is restored. If the code had been 666, I would have been pretty, pretty upset. Yes. Okay, what else we got? We got this. Oh, the code must, it says the date you can't forget. Month, month, year. When? Was he married to Sherry? When did they get married? Do we know that? No, no, no. It's the anniversary, right? He cannot forget the anniversary. But... And the anniversary is, we know that because it's here. November 10th, remember to pick up Darling's gift, but that's not necessarily. November 12th, don't be late for dinner reservation tomorrow. Don't run a repeat of last year. So November 13th is their anniversary. Let's we could jot that down here. Okay, but the, what that doesn't tell us is the year. What is the year of their anniversary? Now, in real life, you know, we could just ask somebody, right? Because what we need is month, month, year. And I don't know the year. At least I don't think I know the year. What do we got here? Got a flyer. Protect Devil's Well. Ritual to banish evil forces. 
Meet at the Stone Circle near Devil's Well, December 7th at Moonset, 3.04 a.m. Just slightly before uh, he would have died. We cannot stand idly by while despicable people wreak wanton destruction and desecrate our precious untamed land. We must protect our wild spaces from interlopers bent on ruination. Mm, interlopers. Reuse of the parlance. But of course, it's going to be the same. Even kind of similar. Keep Devil's Well pure. Banish unwelcome adversaries. No more greed developers. No new construction on CR Country Road 66. No more litter. Over 400 empty beer bottles collected along CR 66 this month alone. No more noise pollution. Loud music at all hours disrupts normal behavior patterns in wildlife. No more senseless slaughter by drunk drivers. There were five times more serious collisions on CR 66 than any other road in the county. We have all seen defenseless wildlife and harmless house cats destroyed by reckless drivers. Join hands in this ritual to eliminate the foul forces despoiling our sacred wilderness. No experience required. Happy Easter, Peep Knox. And we have here a little map. It shows Devil's Well, shows the Stone Circle, shows CR 66, says, Do not park at Old Scratch Tavern. They are the enemy, and you will be towed. Okay, just for some idea. It doesn't show like any houses or anything. But you can see where this back door, I'm assuming this is the back door because there's a bunch of storage. You can see this back door leads right back out onto Devil's Well. My guess is just after this photo was taken, he chased that devil and that devil pushed him off the ledge. Let's see here. Watch this. We're doing some serious, some serious investigative work here. Okay, got this. Put this puppy. It says it was sent, but I don't see it. Here it is. Oh, that's big. Just to give us a, a an idea of the layout there. You can see Old Scratch Tavern and the back door like leads right up to Devil's Well. Leads right up there. Okay. So we need to know what year they got married so we can open up this here sealed bag. I don't think it was in the newspaper article. Is there any other information in this picture? I don't see any, and I think this is, have we, have we covered everything? Be sure we do not we are not missing something. Oh wait, sorry. We are missing something. 
This is a, a real bottle opener. Dude. Come on. See what this says? Let you connect the dots. The Webster's since 2004. So November 13th, 2004. And the format would be month, 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 year. It's kind of weird that it'd be month, month, year. You'd think it would be month, like day of the month, year. It's kind of strange, but I guess there can only be three numbers. So, I mean, I, I guess it's 13, four, one, three, four. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try one, three, four. Seems strange though. One, three, four to open up this bag. Go here and watch me. One, three, four. No. Shit. Shit. Then why did he say uh, the code repeats the date you can't forget? Wait, month, month, not day, day. One, three, four, so it would be 11. Yeah. One, one, four. Sorry. Yeah, y'all are ahead of me. All right, ready? Oh, that's it. We've unlocked the secret bag. What is going to be in this secret bag? The papers that he has hidden away. What do you, what do you suspect would be in here? All right, first off, this looks like a, another email chain. Re Country Road 66 from Tate P. Trabert to Nick Webster. Dear Mr. Webster, I apologize for reaching out to you directly. I understand you're a busy man. But since I haven't heard back from your wife about her latest offer, I thought I'd try you instead. I can assure you we're all still highly motivated to acquire your property. If there are any aspects on our, of our offer on which I can provide clarification, please don't hesitate to ask. Tate P. Travert, Luxit Development Group, LLC, Building Brighter Futures. From Tate P. Travert to Sherry Webster. Mrs. Webster, I appreciate that big decisions like this one take time, but I hope to hear from you soon to discuss finalizing our offer. If there's anything further I can do, please let me know. Sincerely, Tate P. Travert, Luxit Development Group, LLC, Building Brighter Futures. Sherry Webster to Tate P. Travert. Dear Mr. Travert, I'm so glad we were able to come to an agreement. Nick and I just need a few weeks to put our affairs in order, and then we should be ready to finalize the deal. Thank you for your patience. I'll be in touch soon. I just realized I'm reading these in backwards order. Should have started at the bottom and gone up. So we're going back in time with these. Tate P. Travert to Sherry Webster. Mrs. Webster, of course that's no trouble at all. 
I'd be happy to discuss the details of our offer with you over the phone at your earliest convenience. I think you'll find it quite reasonable. Sincerely, Tate P. Travert. And then the initial message from Sherry to Tate P. Travert. Mr. Travert, thank you for taking the time to speak with me this morning. My husband and I have been so troubled by what's happening at the bar, and honestly, it would be such a relief not to worry anymore. Running old scratch means so much to Nick, but these days I can't shake the feeling that something terrible will happen to him. As you can imagine, he's been preoccupied recently, so he asked me to handle the sale directly. I hope you understand. Sherry. So Sherry, trying to sell the bar, right from under her husband's nose. Nick never, never replied. Just got this, just kept it, printed it out. And would you look at this? A letter to Sherry Webster, 407 Shelby Lane, I bet you it's got another one of those. Yes, it's another one of those. Another, another one of these. Let's invert the folding. Maybe this will help us with the other one. Okay, well, so one of these is a letter to Sherry, and one of them is a letter to our suspect number three. So they were writing letters to each other. So this one is probably signed Sherry, and this one is probably signed, um, <clears throat> wait, no, Chris, but they're both, that'd be C for both of them. And yet this one's actually signed G whereas this one was signed F. So we've still got a little work to do with deciphering these. But there's one more thing that was in this bag. You'd never guess what it is. It's a will. It's the last will and testament of one Nicholas Daniel Webster. Damn right. Ahem, uh, Nicholas Daniel Webster of Perdition, Indiana, being of sound mind and not under any duress, and fully aware of the nature and extent of my property and its disposition herein, do hereby declare this document to be my last will and testament, and hereby revoke any and all wills I have previously made. Expenses and taxes. I direct that all my outstanding debts including any expenses incurred after my death, such as funeral and burial costs, be paid out of my estate as soon as my death, as soon after my death as it is reasonable to do so. I further direct that any and all estate and inheritance tax shall be paid out of my estate before the dispensation stipulated below. Dis oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy, I just caught a glimpse of something here. Disposition of property. I bequeath the remainder of my estate to the following beneficiaries. A. To Joan Lavina Campbell of Perdition, Indiana, by way of apology for the trouble she has suffered because of me, I leave the amount of $5,000 in support of Save Devil's Well Foundation. Should she fail to survive me or for any reason refuse this bequest, 
This amount shall be donated to the Perdition Animal Rescue Society in the name of Ving Vinegar Tom the Cat. I've always felt terrible that the driver who killed your Tom was leaving old Scratch. Remember, she threw, she got that girl to throw a dead fox onto the front doorstep of Old Scratch Tavern and had her yell, that's for Vinegar Tom. I've always felt terrible that the driver who killed your Tom was leaving Old Scratch, and I don't blame you for holding the grudge. I hope this helps to make things right. I should have done it sooner. For Donna Marie Goddard of Perdition, Indiana, in recognition for her years of loyal patronage, that's a little unusual, for coming to drink, drink at the bar, I provide that she shall receive free drinks at Old Scratch Tavern for the period of her natural life or for as long as the bar remains in business, whichever is longest. Well, you know. Should she fail to survive me or for any reason refuse this bequest, it is not transferable to any other individual. You supported me from the very start. I want you to know you'll always be welcome at Old Scratch. C. To Carmen Maria Rojas of Perdition, Indiana, as thanks for her steadfast service and honest friendship, I leave the remainder of my estate, including Old Scratch Tavern and all associated assets, the balance of my retirement account, and the payout of my life insurance policy. Should she fail to survive me or for any reason refuse this bequest, I then devise and bequeath the remainder of my estate to her sister, the one who got sick, remember? Christina Elena Rojas. It's the least I can do for you, kiddo. You're the best damn bartender in Indiana and the kind of family I always hoped I'd find. I couldn't leave the bar in better hands. A mission. I have intentionally, and not as a result of any mistake or inadvertence, omitted in this will to provide for my spouse, Sherry Ann Webster. I know you never cared much for the bar, but I thought at least you still cared for me. I was a fool to think so, but better a fool than a liar, I guess. I, the undersigned, Nicholas Daniel Webster, do hereby declare this document as my last will and testament, that I sign it willingly in the presence of both the undersigned witnesses and that I execute it as my free and voluntary act for the purposes expressed herein on this, the third day of December. Third day of December. When he mentioned that Nolan and Courtney witnessed for me, put the papers somewhere safe, i.e. this bag. Signature of the testator, signature of the printed name of the testator. We, the undersigned, attest that on the third day of da 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 da, we uh, sound mind. Uh, yes. So Courtney, Helen Smith, and I can't, that's illegible. Okay. So Sherry was trying to sell the bar out from under her husband, he found out she was being helped by one Chris Thompson, who was probably trying to get, they were probably, probably started by like, hey, let's scare Nick into selling to these people by me doing all this brujeria demon devil stuff. Right? And then um, the night of Nick's death came to the door dressed as the devil. Nick chased after him, going out the back door. We see the back door butts right up to Devil's Well on the little map. 
here. And he either pushed him or he fell. Now, I don't know. That's the one thing I, I cannot determine if he pushed him or if he fell. Either way, it's not good. <clears throat> I would love to decode these two messages, but I don't think it's necessary. I think we pretty much got it. I'm making me want to open the solution. I'll, I'm going to give this one more quick stab. before moving forward. I want to find Carmen's original letter. Or was it Michelle's original letter? Yeah, so here are her examples of a shifted code. So if we assume that this letter, let's try this once more with this letter. Maybe it'll be easier. Maybe it'll come real easy. Maybe. If we assume that this letter was written to Sherry by Chris, then it's C to G. It's plus four. It's a plus four shift. And some of these might be much clearer. Let's just try these last AAF for the last three letters. Ej. The thing is, the, the, here's what I really don't like about this code. Like it'd be fine if I like knew for sure what these letters actually were. But some of these letters, I can't even tell what they are. Like this could be a U or it could be a N. And so I don't have confidence. L. No, this can't be right. No. That is not right. I don't think we need those, though. Would have been nice. Wait, these don't even... Wait a second. to be, you know what, let's just, let's do this. Let's brute force this one. Could be CI. Okay. Nope. It's not plus one. Plus two. D. Gee, that's already wrong. Plus three would be... Nope. Where'd 
those examples again. Sorry, and this is unnecessary. Shift one B to A. Let's be sure that I'm doing this right. W H E N. Okay, yep. So anything like that, any sort of repeating letters, repeating letters, often will be S's, right? There at the end. The VFF, but it's, Maybe it's VFF, maybe it's, maybe it's UFF. If UFF. If that's like two, UFF. No, I can't be right. Nine, no. No. But that's if it's you, if it's you, it's still weird. Okay, let's see, that's minus one, A, no, <laughs> uh, these are a pain, I'm very much just brute forcing this stuff. So I don't think we need to, I don't think we need to, I mean, I really do want to know what these say. My son could do this in like a minute. He's really, really, and this is like his thing now. What letters are relatively, in UP, are relative to each other the same shifted that would allow it to make a word? Could it be if, if. Seven. Seven. No. U and P are five letters away from each other. So what two letters that are five letters away from each other make a word? Mm -hmm. We'll get it eventually.
Hmm. Wait a second. <clears throat> in in so if up is in for up to be in it would have to be oh, I'm so tired man <laughs> um Oh, that doesn't work at all. No, it's, I'm going crazy here. My method is, is flawed. On For up to be on. No. All right. Yeah, T and O. That would just be a one letter shift. I think I tried that before. But did I? A minus one? I think I tried that before. So minus one for the end then would be in No, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I did try that. Um, I mean, it sounds good, right? It seems like it would be right. But and VFF would be either U, E, E, or S, S, E, E. No, that's all the same. So close, it would be T. Very frustrating. All right. Yeah, I, I tried to, I think I tried that when I first did it, because that would just be a shift of one, but it doesn't work for any of the other letters or for the rest of the note. It doesn't work at all. Unless I'm really reading these wrong. Yeah, like, yeah, I already have that actually written down here. I, I tried the minus one. The minus one does not work. I am going to open the solution because I believe that we don't need those to know that the killer was suspect number three, Chris Thompson. And of course, like, of course it would be. I mean, just based on this information we have right here. Chris Thompson cop. He was the one that was the devil. And he is the one who either pushed or tried inadvertently as either manslaughter or it was murder. But I'm about to open the old solution here says, do not open until you're sure you know who the killer is. 
to confirm your theory without spoiling the solution and receive an exclusive epilogue. Blah, 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 blah. All right. This is what I'm saying. The killer is Chris. His accomplice, I mean, I guess it's Sherry, his accomplice, I don't know. But Chris is the killer. Killer devil. Here we go. Hello, investigator. Thanks to you, Sherry Webster is behind bars. And your client, Carmen, found justice for her friend. I knew you were up to this challenge. You can bet I'll be turning to you for help on future cases, too. Congratulations on your success. Oh, look, it's reopening. Webster's death a murder. Suspect arrested. The death of Old Scratch Tavern owner, Nicholas Webster, has been reclassified as a murder, according to official paperwork fi filed this week. Though Webster's December 7th death was initially ruled an accident, the case was recently reopened as a homicide. Sheriff Paul McGinty confirmed a suspect is now in custody in connection with Webster's death. Sherry Webster... The victim's widow has been charged with the murder of her husband, the motive of which is be believed to be financial gain. The sheriff's office announced there will be an external inquiry into the handling of the investigation into Webster's death. While Sheriff McGinty would not discuss the scope of this inquiry, he did confirm that Deputy Christopher Thompson, the officer in charge of the original, original investigation, has been suspended without pay. According to Carmen Rojas, an employee at the bar Mr. Webster owned, the case was solved thanks to new evidence uncovered by a private investigator. None of this would have happened without the help of Gray Investigations, she said. I'll always be grateful to the investigator who worked my case. Well, I'm slightly, slightly disappointed. So was Chris then not, I, I don't know, it seems to me like, they didn't just answer once and for all like some of the questions there. But yeah, I mean, we knew. All right. This was fun for me. Hopefully it was fun for you all too. I very much enjoyed it. Look at this, look at this mess. It's a mess that I now have. It's, it's late. I need to go to bed. <laughs> Don't want to see that stuff. But this is very cool. I'm, I'm definitely going to do another one of these. Um, you know, probably should have decoded these messages, but frankly, it would have taken too long for too little payoff. So, and I get a free bottle opener in the deal. It's a real bottle opener. It's real, real metal. You could, you could hurt somebody with this. All right. Hope everybody has or is having or had a, a happy Easter. And uh, I'll see you all soon. Take care.